Our top story this morning, the latest mission to Mars, set to make a no second chances landing this afternoon. This is NASA animation showing what scientists there call the seven minutes of terror. That's how long they'll be out of contact with the robot spacecraft when it hits the Martian atmosphere at more than 19,000 kilometers an hour. A supersonic chute will deploy. The spacecraft will attempt a maneuver that NASA has never tried before. It's a sky crane where the spacecraft lowers the person Perseverance rover to the surface. Whew, for scientists like Canadian Peter Willis, it's an agonizing and hopefully thrilling end to a journey that lasted more than six months and 480 million kilometers. I'm nervous, but it's a good, it's a good nervous, happy excitement because you know, the best engineers in the world are in charge of this entry, descent, and landing. The EDL team at JPL is just second to none. And um, They've done this a bunch of times, so I think the landing is going to go flawlessly and we're going to touch down and uh, we're all going to celebrate. Now, he is part of the team that will make sure the equipment on Perseverance will be up and running for the mission's big goal, which is to bring back rocks and material that could contain evidence that there once was life on Mars. He's one of a number of Canadian scientists who were involved in the Mars 2020 mission. And you're going to meet another right now, Professor Marie Schmidt, who's an associate professor of Earth Sciences at Brock University, and she is with us this morning from St. Catharines, Ontario. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. So the moment of truth, it's just about seven hours away now. How are you doing? How are the emotions this morning? Oh, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I bet. Now, normally, would you be at Mission Control? Would you all be together, all of the scientists, if there weren't COVID? Yeah. We would, yeah, yeah. So normally for a, a landing such as this, all the science team and the engineers would collect at the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, where we would watch the event together. And this time, because of COVID, that's impossible. So, uh, but it has its advantages because I get to watch the, the landing with my family. So they can share in what you've been doing to contribute to this moment and what you'll be contributing from here on in. I want to talk about your role and make sure everybody understands. As I understand it, you correct me, this rover, this special rover, Perseverance, has seven key instruments and every one of those instruments has a team. Yours is PIXEL, the Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry. Do I have it right so far? Yep. Tell me what PIXEL is, Professor. Sure, so what Pixel does is it measures the chemical composition of the surfaces of, of rocks and soils. But what's really a, an innovation with this, um, with this instrument is that it is able to uh, detect micro scale variability in chemistry on the surface. What I mean by that is that it, it measures tiny spots on the surface of the rock, so 100 microns across, and it, uh, it um, compiles a grid or a, a line of these spots in order to give us indication of how the, the surface composition varies. Okay, so tell me how your role fits in there. You're watching from Earth as it does its work or, or what specifically will you be doing? I'll be interpreting the data when it comes down. So we'll get bundles of data every day. The rover is not going to uh, start to examine um, is not going to use the, the pixel right away. Uh, we have to pick out the best rock targets uh, using other instruments such as the cameras and the super cam which shoots lasers at rocks to determine the chemistry that way. And uh, uh, once we find a good, uh, good sample to um, a good rock to, to target, we will uh, put the pixel on it and find out its microscale variability in chemistry. And once you get that data back, you'll be able to tell what's in that soil, what's in that rock, the elements there? Yep. Yeah, we also have a way, the Sherlock instrument is going to tell us the mineralogy as well. So in combination with the pixel, um, we'll get a very good idea of what that rock is made of. So when does your work kick in? Obviously, it lands this afternoon. It's going to take some time to check itself out and then get going. At what point in the, in the, in the mission does your pixel work begin? Uh, I would anticipate that'll happen uh, a couple of months from now. Okay. So there'll be some first-time activities. They'll check out to make sure that the that the instrument is healthy, um, but we won't actually start to measure rocks for a couple months. Now, this is 
your third mission. I understand you've done other Mars missions before. So, I mean, I, I'm sure it doesn't become old hat, but I mean, you are experienced in all of this. But we're talking a lot about how this mission, Mars 2020 and Perseverance, is the most advanced. What makes it so? Well, it has a couple of uh, really exciting components of this mission. Uh, the first is that it's going to uh, actually um, collect samples that will be eventually returned to Earth. So, so that's a really exciting part of that, and uh, it's just the first stage in that um, in that Mars uh, that Mars sample return uh, set of missions. So that that rover will collect samples, and then those samples will be retrieved by another rover, and then eventually launched into orbit, and then brought back to Earth. So that's a long that's a long set of things that have to go right. Yes. But this is the first thing that that uh, that will bring it. Um, those samples back to Earth. And when they do come back, be the first samples from space that we've had since the moon, I understand it. And one of the scientists is at the ROM, the Royal Ontario Museum, going to be looking at those samples. So Canadians involved there. I want to, to do something with you for the last couple of minutes together, if we could, Professor. Last hour, we had our super space fans, Theron and Alfie, and usually we put them together with scientists. They are really into space, but because they had to go to school, they weren't able to meet you directly. They did leave a couple of questions for you. So can I allow them to ask you the questions? We're going to start with Theron's question, first of all. One of the main things I'd like to know is that if this is successful and we do find life, like even just the remnants of life, what will the future missions be and what will the plan be to do with it and to do with our future missions? Professor? That is a great question. <laughs> so, uh, so if we are successful in finding life, there's a couple things that we'll want to know. First is how diverse is life on Mars? Also, uh, the really cool thing about Mars, um, about finding life on Mars, is that if we can uh, understand life on Mars, we can start to understand the origins of life on our planet. So both of those questions will be really big picture things to, to try to answer. In the years to come, when they're maybe in a scientific career, they're both very keen on space. Alfie Chan has a question for you too, Professor. I think that I would like to ask her, since the environment on Mars and Earth are so, so different because you got like Mars in our atmosphere, harsher conditions, it's very hot and can sometimes be very, very cold. And you got Earth rocks where everything is just like just right. Like what would there be and like, would there be any difference between the rocks? Like would there be different chemical compounds? How would she analyze the rocks when they get back? That is right in your wheelhouse. What are you, what's your answer, <laughs> Professor, to that? So, yeah, the rocks have uh, interacted with the Martian atmosphere. And the Martian atmosphere, he's right, is very acidic. And uh, there's um, sulfur-rich dust that is raining down on, on the Mars surface today. So everything that we see on the Mars surface is, is pretty altered. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we'll we'll see uh, minerals that we don't typically see on Earth, or maybe we only see in very acidic conditions on Earth. Thank you very much for doing that. I hope they're uh, taping our conversations so they can see your answers. I think they want to end up at university with you someday. Great scientists okay. in the making. And all the best. We'll be thinking of it at 355 as it lands and touches down, and we'll stay in touch because your work is just beginning. Thank you, Professor Marie Schmidt.